Destiny 2's Warmind DLC is right around the corner, and I decided to do a video of just sharing my thoughts on this DLC of what I've seen so far and what I've heard. This, of course, means that I will have some things that I will talk about in hopes for this DLC that may or may um, not happen with this upcoming DLC. So, with that out of the way, I want to also know your thoughts on this DLC, like what you've seen so far. Do you think that this DLC might be really good, or do you think that it's going to be boring? Do you think that this will bring you back to Destiny 2 for a while to... Uh, play the game or do you think it's just not enough and you're just gonna mainly wait till the expansion for September because most likely that will be the point where there's gonna be tons of things added to the game to allow people to come back who've already quit Destiny 2 but for me um, I've told you guys with Destiny 1 specifically like if we want to compare the expansions uh, I quit Destiny 1's vanilla uh, like I think in November or end of October, I just stopped playing Destiny 1 because I wasn't having fun. I didn't get to do the raid that much. I couldn't find a raid group to do it. I did it like once and we got to the end and we didn't beat it. But I, I had a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun in it, but it was just, it was very annoying that I had to like go out of my way to find a group to play the raid. But I went back to Destiny 1 after not playing it when the Crota's end DLC was just like a few months in of its release. And it was nothing that I was crazy about. I mean, I was I was excited to play it because I had more friends that were, were playing more and were doing the raid. And I actually decided to do uh, the raid and I actually found LFG this way where I was able to do the raid a lot more. And uh, it was enjoyable, but there was just not enough content when it came to the story missions, so that we only got one strike, and it, the main reason that people played Destiny was the grind and the the interesting loot, and also PvP, you know, for Destiny One was a lot more fun compared to Destiny Two's, uh, which I know that's debatable for a lot of people. But House of Wolves expansion was where I was more excited for an a small little DLC. Yes, it still didn't have that much to it, but it was a lot more fun than the Crota Zen DLC where I felt like it was very dry in, um, in content. House of Wolves kept me going though where I kept playing it because of Trials. It wasn't because of the Prison of Elders. I actually played that for like, you know, a month or two and then I was done. I didn't want to play it anymore. I just wanted to do Trials. So with this Warmind DLC, it kind of gives me that House of Wolves vibe where it's making me interested and excited to play it, but I don't think it's going to, again, because just like House of Wolves, I don't think it's going to keep my attention for the entire summer. I don't know, but I still play Destiny 2 to this day, even when there's just nothing to do. I just play it. But one reason I'm excited for this DLC is um, it's PvE content. Now, for PvP, it's getting slightly better. Uh, like... The 6v6 Iron Banner is really good. I really wish it was like more permanent for quick play. But them uh, changing up PvP where now it's you go faster, the, the weapons are stronger and stuff. It's a little bit more enjoyable than what it once was. But it's far from perfect. Like it's far from being as fun as Destiny 1's PvP where you could go out by yourself and get just tons of kills easy. Like, in Destiny 2, it still can be a struggle because of the team shooting and people just bunching up together and, and such, so, uh, and the time to kill and everything. It's, um, my primary reason of playing Destiny 2 is it's PvE, because the PvE in Destiny 1 was really, really boring other than the raids. The strikes was something that I really did like because... I don't know, it was just something fun uh, for me, like, you know, going through this entire mission and to the end, get to the boss, and then beat it, and you get loot. And the strikes for Destiny 2, majority of them were a lot more fun. I mean, the Marauder one is terrible, but even that is, like, not as bad as, like, compared to, like, the strikes from Destiny 1, Vanilla Destiny, like, the uh, Ballas Terraric and stuff, like, which could be debatable for a lot of you, but um, it's it's... There's some things that make it a little bit better. Not entirely, though. I'll promise you that. But 
Um, with Warmind, they've announced that there will be three strikes, and this is the only thing that does disappoint me. I've always said that when it comes to PlayStation exclusives, I'm fine with um, companies wanting to ensure that they get more attention by uh, spending money to get exclusive stuff from that game. But when it's like content where it will like just completely split the the community on who's going to get this nightfall now because it's exclusive is when it's a prom same thing for like pvp like maps like that so pvp maps in strikes like anything like that uh or like you know obviously if they were to do a raid that would be ridiculous but like strikes pvp maps that they've done recently is a no-no for me i mean the playstation exclusive taken strike uh for vanilla destiny 2 was amazing i love it but i can't play it on xbox and i do most of my grinding on xbox so it is disappointing that i do not get the strike until who knows when i mean for destiny 1 i had to wait i think it was like two years to get these uh two strikes or one of the strikes or whatever but um the thing is is that the the exclusive strike for playstation is i think on Nessus, while the other two, one of them we already seen, which is a picture of um, a wizard um, prince or whatever, like knight, whatever, it, no Chris, basically, and then uh, the other one, I do not know, but it's, I think it's inside the, like, war mind or something, I don't know, but uh, I don't, I hope that they're both not just completely hive themed, because Odds are, and I, I've said this many times, the next big expansion is most likely going to be based around Sabathun, which she is Hive, and with that, we're going to get a lot of Hive content, and I just don't want too much Hive stuff in Destiny 2 when I had enough of that with Destiny 1. I want there to be a mix of all the, the races other than just, let's keep bothering the hive <laughs> like let's just do that but don't get me wrong i'm excited for it either way even if it is i mean with this war mine dlc i was honestly shocked and disappointed that it was hive but with icicles on their arms but um because i thought it was gonna be fallen but i could be wrong there could be more secrets with this you know story and dlc but Either way, the PvE content is what I'm mainly excited for. Like, even though PlayStation, PlayStation gets one exclusive strike, we, I get two, no matter what, for Xbox, and I get three for PlayStation. I play on both consoles. So, yay! I'm actually really happy about that, because the more strikes that we get, the the more I get happier, because I, I want there to be more and more strikes, so then I get more excited to play this one or that one, and so on and so forth. Um, Crucible maps will all be free now, which is great, so, um, now that, like, people are not split in playlists and such when searching, you get to play the new maps and everything, that's really cool of them, um, and, you know, I'm not always super crazy about Crucible maps, I'm just like, wow, you know, I can't wait to play it, you know, add into the loop, but, um, now, now let's talk about the, the other thing is, uh, with Warmind CLC is the patrol area. Now, at first, I was wondering if they were even going to do a patrol area. The reason why is because, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is because, like, it, it almost felt like it was just going to be story missions on a separate planet thing, but without the patrol area. But I, I was shocked to see that we're actually going to get a patrol area on Mars. And... They said it's, like, a little bit bigger than Curse of Osiris's patrol area, I think. Which, you know, that's not much to say, because let's be honest, um, Mercury's patrol zone is really, really small. It's a donut. But, at the same time, I've, again, more content, the better. Because when it came to Destiny 1 with these new expansions, the small ones, all they added was just a strike, a few crucible maps, and a raid. Uh, with these expansions, they add upon the game, it feels like now, like where there's more things to do. But, I mean, with House of Wolves, at least they added the Prison of Elders, so it gave us kind of like a new activity, like a new area to play in. But um, with Destiny 2, with both expansions, we've gotten something to add to the uh, the destination map, which is good. But the destination doesn't look anything crazy. It looks pretty basic, but it is cool that they have this like 
Core to Oryx, Archon's Forge kind of thing um, where, and it's mixed with like Prison of Elders where like you can activate it whenever you want, which is cool, but it's got a, a wave system. You probably have already seen this. If not, it's a wave system uh, up to seven levels and it gets harder each time, but each level will have like a little like, I guess, mini boss that you battle. But at the way end at level seven, there'll be an actual boss uh, which there'll be five of them, so each week it'll change. So it'll be like Core to Oryx. I like this because it gives us a really good idea of like a horde mode that is possible for the game for the future than just making it just Prison of Elders. But I thought it was really cool, um, especially since it's in a patrol zone and like Archon's Forge and Court of Oryx, but it's in the main area. So then you're not worrying about people who just go into patrol and go with their sparrow all the way to Archon's Forge and you're sitting there by yourself waiting for someone to actually go into the forge itself. So having it in an actual patrol area that everyone's going to be a part of is very good. And and I, I look forward to that because I've always wanted patrol to get a lot more active and this is a really good thing because I knew that something was missing like Archon's Forge and I we really needed it for um, the, the patrol zones to be a little bit more active. Because they're doing a great job with patrol, in my opinion. Uh, there's public events as well for this area as well. Um, I've seen Defend the War Sat and also something with the Witch's Ritual, which I'm guessing is like the one on Titan. But the the thing is, is the character designs actually do look interesting. I know it's a reskin, but um, with the enemies, with them having the ice on them, like I saw a knight with like a shield was really cool in my opinion i i did like it it wasn't like a complete and utter reskin and i'm i mean come on guys like with house of wolves we we got fallen that are just more blue and with like new shanks and a new servitor uh design like that was just a little bit more spiky so you know i'm not expecting anything that huge of design changes for a small dlc but I did like it. I really did with their designs. It is kind of funny that uh, there's just icicles on Hive. <laughs> like, okay. Um, when I was watching the intro cutscene, if you don't want any spoilers, anything for the intro cutscene uh, that they showed off uh, during the stream, it I was really kind of confused. Like, I was like, wait, are the Hive aw uh, awoken from the war sets? heating up the ice because i i thought that was confusing that they're frozen and from just temperature like i don't really know but uh, i don't know if that's the case but e with that uh, like science out of the way of how that could have like what's going on here the end creature people are speculating it could be an ogre it could be um a worm god like a leviathan or something which i do hope it's that or who knows but if it's a leviathan or whatever like a hive worm or some shit that'd be crazy that'd be really really good because um uh with curse of osiris we got a new enemy like a completely new design enemy um uh pompties or something no is that oh, wait a minute you know I'm going to look that up real quick. What was that enemy? Well, even the, uh, while I'm looking this up, um, basically, the the I'm hoping that they do have a crazy design for a boss for just the story, because that was really cool of them that they were like, um, like, oh, you know, instead of just making bad guys big, uh let's make a new design, like a whole different enemy. So it was really cool that they did Panoptes. That was it, okay. Um, he His design was really, really cool. It was interesting. It was disappointing that his end game boss like, was not used for a strike. I feel like it would be cool if they redesigned it a bit so then it could be also a strike. Uh, cause it was a decent boss. It could have been better though. Cause it was more lines of just like, he's immune until this happens. And all you need to do is just point and shoot. Like literally you're frozen there and all you have to do is shoot at him on a platform. But with the Warmind DLC, either way, I'm looking forward to it. If it's anything like Curse of Osiris or better, cause the story for Curse of Osiris was 
decent, actually. I actually did like it a bit. There was some corniness out of it, like Segura's scre uh, Scream. That was a meme. But um, there was a lot more missions that were a lot more, like, intriguing and a lot more fun. Like, when I did the expansion, uh, the small DLCs for Destiny 1, a lot of the, the story missions were just forgettable. And they were just filled with, like, just enemies attacking you in an area that you've already been in. Um, like, which Curse of Osiris did this as well. Like, where they, they are like, hey, you've been at this planet, and you've been in this cave, but you're going there anyways. Because content. <laughs> but... Still, it was a longer deal, uh, story DLC than Crota's End. So for Warmind, I'm hoping it's it's as long as Curse of Osiris or more. Because uh, with House of Wolves, I do remember there being a lot more to the story. And it was a lot more intriguing, even though it was really, really, really short. Just like any of these other DLCs. But um, when it comes to the story, we don't really know much, which is good. And uh, I will obviously do an updated, like, you know, my final thoughts of the DLC when it actually comes out. But I do hope this story has some awesome lore to it and maybe some dark tone story to it. I know that we might not get that until the next big expansion, but um, just this whole like, oh, we got to make jokes, this, you know, oh, it's happy land. When when shit's bad, it's it doesn't really fit the like the storytelling for this kind of game when you do it like that and not like a darker tone. You don't have to make it completely dark, but. I feel like Destiny 1 did a, a decent job for its dark lore, especially when it came to the Grimoire. It was really, really good. So, I don't know with Warmind when it comes to its story. But when it comes to the loot, there is stuff to grind for. It was cool that they do have exclusive armor for the that uh, protocol, like Hive um, Horde mode in Patrol. But it doesn't look like it's going to have any exclusive perks for that you could use for like against Hive or anything like that. Something cool, which is disappointing. But again, I, I this DLC was made way ahead of time. It's more aligns the September expansion than I'm more aligns like being like, I hope that they listen now that they know what we want uh, when it comes to how we grind our stuff. But uh, I hope it, they do also make it fair. When it comes to the grind, because I, I am going to be honest that, yes, the grind was amazing for Destiny 1 for some people. It was kind of unfair for those who actually, you know, had life stuff, so they couldn't grind for that much. And it was uh, annoying where you would play with a friend who could play the game for millions of hours, get a god roll Isaluna, and then you you have a job, you have a family, you don't have time to play the game that much, and you never get it. You never, ever get it. You keep playing Crucible, though, whenever you have free time, and you just never get the, the god roll, but that other person did. But uh, there is some cool weapons. There's cool things to grind for, because I, they showed off that PvP pulse rifle to grind for when it comes to the Crucible ranks, which I did hope. There was an actual reason for the ranks to get them rather than just bragging rights. Because thing is, is no one cares about most of the time bragging rights. Like if they're going to have bragging rights, they're going to use emblems or things that they got from Eververse or whatever, or things they got from the raid. They're not going to use like, oh, look at my rank in Crucible when no one is really playing the Crucible. So the Pulse Rifle does have a new perk in it. It seems kind of game breaking, but at the same time, it's... What's needed for this game? Like, I feel like people need to understand that balance for Destiny, the way that you guys want it to be, is hard to um, hard to do. Because the, we have so many weapons, and if you want your weapons to feel distinctive, balance is going to have to break a little. Just a bit. But with this Pulse Rifle, basically, when you got Outlaw, which um, precision kills uh, increase the reload speed. But... When you get Outlaw procced, Desperado also procs where your rate of fire goes up, which also your damage doesn't go down. So you're still doing the, the same amount of damage, just quicker, which to people could think, you know, whoa, this is broken, but something to grind for. It's really, it's an actually uh, decent, uh, really good sc uh, scout pulse rifle for you to grind. Uh, for the ranks and only certain people are going to be able to get it and there is an ornament for it for uh, getting to a certain 
rank that only like a, a small uh, portion of people will be able to get. So there's something to show off at, uh, for that, like something that not everyone will get, which we do need that as well. We can't just keep being like, yeah, everyone gets everything. But at the same time, you want to make sure that some game changing items, weapons and stuff that people can get them. They, they actually can. They just need to put more time into it. Like when it came to trials, it was good actually that they removed the whole like if you went flawless, you got the uh, trials weapons just with a burn on it because it was unfair because not everyone was able to go flawless. But having something that you get to go flawless is needed a bit to because what's the point of going flawless then? So like when it came to like the newest trials that they did in Destiny 1, they had the same weapons that you could get free with doing trials without flawless which were like um blind perdition and stuff or bur um what is it burning eye or burning stone or something and um but the difference was when you went flawless you got the weapon and it was its design was gold and it had an intrinsic perk of snapshot and also like i don't know if it was just the flawless ones but when you aim down it highlighted enemies but either way it was a little bit more fair where it wasn't entirely game breaking, but I know that some people might disagree and be like, no, you shouldn't be able to get anything that's game changing. It should be cosmetic or something. I don't know. But that's the reason why no one really does care about Flawless and Destiny 2 because, woo, I got a blue aura to my armor. <laughs> like, who cares? But uh, we don't know anything about the raid layer other than its name, uh, which is like, rising star or something like that but uh uh it's a it's a raid layer if anything it's going to be like the one that we got before which was fun it's not bad so i look forward to that we also will be finally getting the prestige uh version of the other raid layer just you know took a long time but uh we got that as well uh what was it the the exotics we've seen pictures of them and they do look interesting we do see some returning exotics uh, like Soros, but I wasn't seeing that many weapons when it comes to exotics. I've seen a lot of armor, and I hope that this DLC is not just armor and like a few weapons. I want to see a decent amount of weapons, like as much as Curse of Osiris or a little bit more. So, who knows? But the masterwork system for exotic weapons is cool. Like I heard about that where they'll have that either way. Just having getting the double kills and dropping orbs of light will be great. Because I, I do like that about legendaries and uh, the exotic reworks uh, update. Like all the free updates that we're getting with this Warmind DLC is really promising. I guess we are getting vault space increase like of at least 50 slots with this little DLC. I do hope that still happens because it's needed. But um, either way, this DLC does catch my interest for it being... Because Curse of Osiris, I was not that pumped to play. And in the end, I did like it, though. With this DLC, I'm a little bit more excited. Um, not that much. I mean, it's Destiny 2. But um, either way, like I actually am looking forward to playing this DLC. So I want to know your thoughts. I I do plan on uh, obviously recording this experience, playing through the DLC and, and such. So um, if you want to see that stuff right away as soon as the DLC comes out, like the like obviously it might take me a day to upload it, so it, won't, it will be uploaded on like May 9th. But if you want to see that stuff right away, make sure to leave a like on this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you when that DLC comes out. Thank you so much. Chibi out.